Hi, I'm Pat Kelly. Okay, in this problem, the situation they give us is that we have a normal distribution with this X bar of 64 that they tell us and a uh, standard deviation, a sigma of 7. Okay, so they've given us the situation with the, the normal distribution, the mean, and the uh, standard deviation. And you need to know those things because as soon as you know those things, then you can give yourself a drawing, which is going to look like a bell curve, and you're going to see when we get to it, is we'll end up using this standard normal table. And they even mention that in the directions too. So make sure you have your standard normal table handy. I'll talk you through how to use it. But it really will become one of your best friends. All right. All of our answers are on here somewhere. So I'll show you with this one how we do that. All right. To begin, when I mention that they tell us it's a normal distribution, they give us x bar and they give us sigma that that allows you to visualize what's going on. So I'd highly recommend this as maybe a first step is to go ahead and draw yourself a bell curve so you can see the answer that they're looking for visually. They want the probability that if you select an X at random, it's greater than or equal to 45. So let's draw that. Let's try to give ourselves a visual on that question. So since it's a normal distribution, I've drawn my bell curve. And the X bar that they tell, told us was 64 always goes right in the middle if this is my X distribution. And that standard deviation, it is important, but you really don't need to worry about it in terms of this drawing, okay? This is really just scratch work for us. All right, here's what's next, though. Uh, then I want to try to represent the question of being greater than 45. So 45 is just off to the left of 64. Some distance. Don't worry about scale at all. Okay? 45 is to the left. And then if they said they want the probability that x is greater than 45, that just means that I want this area all the way to the right. They said greater than. Okay? So this is what I meant by giving yourself a visual of the answer to the question they're asking is we're going to get this orange area of this curve and that's going to be our final answer. And I'm not there yet, but this is the tie-in to how this table is going to be your best friend. This table gives you all of the areas for these bell curves. Okay, so we just have to find the right one for our situation. All right, here's what's next. This is an important step too. I think they all are, right? But this is important for you to kind of internalize the catch with this table is it only deals with the z distribution. But what I have right now is an x variable. Okay, So the important step you need to take is to convert your x into a z. And you have a formula for that. Probably one of the most important formulas in statistics. So I hope you have this one memorized. z equals a quick little fraction of x minus x bar in the numerator and sigma in the denominator. Okay, Get that ingrained in your brain. And what that does is it converts x values to z values. So in our situation, the x that we're wondering about is that 45 that they asked about. So 45 is, what is going to be what I plug in for x right here. 45 minus x bar they gave us, that's the 64, divided by sigma, and that's the 7 that they gave us. Told you it would be significant at some point. And then I'm going to go ahead and write approximately equal to, because what you're going to do is grab your calculator even for this if you want, but 45 minus 64 and then divide by 7. I'll do that myself on the calculator. 45 minus 64 and divide by 7, with rounding is a negative 2.7. And what you're going to do is round just to one decimal place. Okay, So I have this 7 in the tenth spot. Okay, that's important in a minute. All right, so here's what's next. This is a z value. You can look at the far end of my equals here, the beginning of the formula. That is a z value. The reason I point that out is because that standard normal table I told you only handles z values. 
what we've done is converted the 45 that they were interested in as an X into a Z, and now we're able to go to that table. So you're going to go to this table and look up a Z value of negative 2.7. I have drawn here already a, a, just a skeleton of the table. You'll have the full-blown version, but here's how you use it, okay? Let me even maybe try to color code a little bit. What you do is just the whole number, so to the left of the uh, decimal, that tells you what row you're in, okay? So here's my negative 2 as a row, and the um, decimal part of your Z value the 0.7 for me here, that's what tells you what column to look in. So there's my 0.7. Different problem, you're going to have a different Z value and probably a different whole number and a different decimal, but it's always the same. The whole number tells you what row, the decimal tells you what column, and then what you do is cross-reference and find the entry that's there. Okay, for me, and your table should be exactly the same, so you should be seeing a 0 0.0035 right there. And what that tells me, let me get back to my work here, is that this Z value has an area of 0 0.0035 to its left. All right, I'm pausing for dramatic effect. Because if you caught this, what I said was that this area is to the left of that Z value. This standard normal table, all of the entries in the body of the table give us areas to the left of what you just looked up. So let me grab another color if I can, about yellow. What that tells me in my drawing is that this 0 0.0035 is to the left of this. This area is 0 0.0035. Sorry, that's sideways but you got to make sure you catch that the area from the table is always to the left of what you looked up. So then you take a deep breath. Well, how does that tie into what I'm looking for? You know the yellow area here, but you want the orange area that's everything else. So my final answer here, I can take one more step. My desired area, did I keep it color? coordinated, yeah, the orange, okay, my desired area is going to equal 1 minus the 0 0.0035. Table only gives me to the left. I wanted to the right, so just to do a 1 minus equals 0 0.9965. Whew, and that's your final answer, okay? A little bit of work, you got to get used to it, you got to do your practice, but you'll love this table, I promise you. Okay, get to it.